getting ready. Okay. Good evening, and welcome to another lecture given by the Meridian Bible Class. First of all, this is a school and not a church, and we're not associated with any church organization, job witnesses, or any other denomination that you have taught in the world today. Now, this school was founded in the year of 1931 by Dr. Henry C. Kenley, who had a divine vision and revelation direct from Yahweh. And the charts you see, pictorially illustrated, are results of that divine vision and revelation. Now, we'll be explaining the name you see here. Now, Yahweh is the true and correct name of our Heavenly Father, which is once laid down in the scriptures. We have Yahweh symbolized as a cloud on this chart because Yahweh symbolized himself as a cloud in many passages of your Bible. We have the cloud extending all around the edge of the chart so that everything on the chart is within the cloud. Just as everything that exists exists within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now, in this pure spirit state, Yahweh has no descriptive shape or form in which he is the ultimate source and substance, the limits and the bounds of everything that exists. Now, when your translator has come across the true and correct name of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, they have usually inserted the English title, Lord. Yahweh now, taking on a superincorporeal shape and form within himself, is known as Elohim. Now, superincorporeal means without physical flesh and blood. And in this state, Yahweh Elohim can only be seen in a divine vision and revelation. As stated in Exodus 24, 9 and 10. Then when Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and they saw the Elohim of Israel. Now remember, they saw Elohim in a divine vision and revelation. Now when your translators has come across the true and correct divine title for Yahweh Elohim in shape and form, they have usually inserted the English title, God. Yahweh Elohim now, manifested in a physical body as the Savior of the world, is Joshua the Messiah, as stated in John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Yahweh. And in the 14th verse, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, when your translators has come across the true and correct original Hebrew name by Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, they have usually inserted false and erroneous names, such as Jesus Christ. But remember, Yahweh in pure spirit as the Father, Yahweh in a superincorporeal shape and form known as the Word of Son is Elohim, and Yahweh manifested in a physical body as the Savior of the world is Yahshua the Messiah. Yahweh in his two manifestations, but one spirit, as stated in 1 John 5 and 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Now, my investigation on your part will prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that the name and title we teach here are true and correct, but that the names and titles that you have taught in the world are false and erroneous. For example, look up the letter J. It is not and never has been in any part of the Hebrew language. It did not come into existence in any language prior to the Middle Ages. Therefore, such things as Jehovah and Jesus are impossible renders by Heavenly Father the true and correct name, Yahweh, and his son, Yahshua, the Messiah. Our aims, the primary constitutional objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, sex, creed, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called laws of nature and powers laden in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures compared to religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating in the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which once delivered unto the sons of children of Yahweh. Nine, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained that there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tent to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification 
in the New York State. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. We have prayer by Dr. Miranda Gonzalez and Strips of Lesson by Dr. Shirley Cole. Strips of Lesson be John the 17th chapter. <laughs> Good evening to everyone. Let us bow our heart and our mind for prayer. Our most gracious heavenly father, Yahweh, we are indeed thankful and grateful that you have given us another opportunity to gather together with the brethren in this manner, to hear, share, and partake, and partake of this vision and revelation, divine vision and revelation. We are, first of all, thankful that you have gathered us in our own conscience to see, hear, and feel your ever presence in us and to live, move, and have our being in righteousness in you. We thank you for all our daily bread that you give us, spiritual bread, to feed our soul so that we can continue to walk in righteousness in, the, in your sight. We ask you to continue to purge us um, consciously of those things that are not pleasing in thy sight and that we realize that we are always, no matter how, what, when, or where, we are always in your sight. You are always present. So as we gather together tonight, settle our heart and mind so that we can uh, focus in on those things and realize that it is your presence that is being expressed. These are our blessings we ask. In thy son's name, Yahshua the Messiah. Let us all say. Good evening. Scripture lesson is John, the 17th chapter. I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name versions of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by the late A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association, Incorporated. John, the 17th chapter. These words spake Yahshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know that thou only art the true El and Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have declared thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, take and keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, 
and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition in fulfillment of the scripture. And now I come, and now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world will hate them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth, because thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in unity, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. That was John, the 17th chapter. All right, hallelujah. Good evening, class. My name is Carla Carter. I'll be the host for this evening's class session. And what we're going to do tonight, we're going to have um, the floor open for testimonies with a 10-minute time limit. And so what I'll do at the end of the 10 minutes, I'll give you a two-minute warning. And when I give the warning, please take, you know, the next two minutes to go ahead and finish up your comments so we can have time for everybody to get a chance to express themselves tonight. That being said, the floor is open for testimonies. Good evening, brethren. Good evening. I um let me gather my thoughts. Last Sunday was powerful if you listened to Dr. Boston and some of the things that he was saying were the same thoughts and the same words that that I was saying, now, this is a great gospel. We are truly blessed. We are blessed. Now, people don't understand when he says that you're Yahweh. You're just not conscious of it. Well, I tell you, anybody that takes it upon themselves and be obedient to study, to listen, to prove everything for themselves. When they come to know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists, then the reality is you're finding yourself because you are, you're made of his substance. Your spirit materialized. And I say again, yeah, we're heirs and joint heirs with Yahshua the Messiah. So we are sons also of Yahweh. Yahshua told his disciples where he go, where he go, he would prepare a place for them so that they may be where he is. 
And where he was, he was in a physical body with the Holy Spirit in him. And we're on the precipice. We're right, right at the end of this age. And we are, if we have the Holy Spirit, right with our brother, and I say brother, Yahshua, because he is our brother. We're right with him. We're in this fleshly body, but we're not in the world. Our conscious, our mind, if you want to call it, our spirit is already in the kingdom. We're already in the kingdom. And we have to come to grips with that in its simplicity. It's all Yahweh. May I have Isaiah 46, 9 or 10? Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Remember the former things of old. Remember, remember the former things of old. Isaiah is a prophet. Isaiah is speaking what thus saith Yahweh. Now at the time, this is for the Jews or the Hebrews. It was no Jews. It was the Hebrews. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'll be interrupting a little bit. For I am ill and there is none else. I am, I am Yahweh and there is none else. Go ahead. I am Elohim, and there is none like me. I am Yahweh, and there is none like me. We don't have his wisdom. We can't tell him what to do. It is what it is. Even being in class, for how many years you've been in class, you still have to go back and refresh yourself on the things that the founder has handed down. Because over time, your own concepts will creep in and twist the simplicity of this gospel. Just have to do it. It's a repetition. And you have to gain, you have to build that knowledge and understanding up so that you will be a true son you will be, when Yahshua was walking on the face of the earth, he was telling his disciples, my father, my father. He made a distinction. But once he died, buried, resurrected, came, you know, walked around and showed himself to many, he said, our father. He was counting them as sons then before the Holy Spirit was poured out. And it was only poured out to the Hebrews at the time. And when the Holy Spirit was poured out, what did he do? The same way he tied their tongues or twisted their tongues or in, in, uh, at the Tower of Babylon, he straightened it out because every man that was there, even though they came from different places because they were in captivity, those were all Hebrews of renown, the smart boys. And they all spoke in their language, in Hebrew, whether they came from Assyria, Babylon, wherever it was. I'm sorry, I'm rambling on. I got a little bit of time. Go ahead with the next verse. Calling the eagle from the east. Wait a minute, did we just tell Yes. We did, Tim. Mm -hmm. Declaring the end from the beginning and from mm -hmm. ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Now, that's what he did before the foundation of the world. He declared the, the end right from the beginning. And, and, and what was this purpose? Can I have Ephesians 1, 9 and 10? Ephesians 1, 9 and 10. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. Now we know this mystery. 
we know the mystery of his will now. It wasn't known then, but we know it now. I I'll be bopping them, but go ahead, Shirley. According to his good pleasure, which he has purpose in himself. Pause. He purposed it within himself. He did not need our permission. He did not need our input, but he purposed it within himself right from the beginning. Go ahead, Shirley. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in the Messiah, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. And that's it. The son, Joshua, who's really Yahweh, but the Holy Spirit, that super incorporal being, he was going to reconcile everything through him back to himself. And then he made the man. And the man fell in his consciousness. And this purpose has been operating throughout the dispensations and ages, it just steadily operating. And we get some things mixed up, you know, because we want to put ourselves in it, but it was never given to the Gentiles, even though Yahweh made provisions for the Gentiles. He chose Abraham. He chose that particular nation. And he told Abraham, he gave him a promise. Genesis, what is it? 12, one through three. Genesis 12 and one. Now Yahweh has said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Amen. And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. There you have it. In Abraham's seed, all families of the nation will be blessed. We know he had Isaac and Ishmael. So he had the Hebrews and he had the rest of the nations. That was a promise. The Gentiles will come in according to that promise. The Hebrews, they would be blessed. Yahshua would come in. He would shed his blood for the cleansing of the sanctuary. He would shed his blood to fulfill all of those carnal laws and ordinances that they could not keep. And he would nail it to his cross. And there was some, some confusion back then. I'm sorry, I, I, I get tongue tied when, when I try to talk. So many things going through my head. They had confusion then back there. But those who were sent to preach to the Gentiles, I think it was Peter, Paul, Saul, they received the promise, they received the Holy Spirit by the preaching of Yahshua, the Messiah, by the preaching of his death, burial, resurrection, by preaching of Yahweh and Yahshua. And people get that confused and say that Yahshua had to die so that he could marry another. No, we're talking about the creator, the stellar universe. No, we come in by a promise. We're not, we haven't taken off the flesh. We're still in the flesh. We're still men and women. But if we've received and continue to gain that knowledge and understanding and perfect our understanding of that purpose, what Yahweh has planned for us, what he wants us to do, you know, learn of him, learn of our brother who was our salvation. And I know I'm going, I'm, I'm cutting up and I'm going all over the place. And my time's yeah, probably two more minutes. Two, yeah, more yeah, minutes. two more minutes. I just, it was a joy last, last Sunday 
It was a joy to hear the truth uncut, you know, and I do have a tendency to the, the reference of us things. I was a parliament funkadelic person, you know, make my funk the peace funk, you know, give it to me straight. Don't sugarcoat it. And this is why I love the brethren here. Now I've been studying with the founder. That's what I've been doing. I've been listening to his tapes, taking notes. I've always read the transcripts, but I'm reading them over again and I'm seeing the things and hearing the things that he taught. And a few times he said, he called call you people of Yahweh. He says, I want to give a testimony to our brethren and our savior. And it makes you pause because we're on the precipice right here. And we have to get it right. We can't just talk it. We have to walk it. We have to breathe it. We have to taste it. It has to be in our very being. Because we don't have a lot of time to get it right. And we talk about love. We're not, we're not talking about a physical love. We're talking about a instinctive love for your children that surpasses it doesn't surpass the love that our father has for us because his is divine love. But it can get close. It can get close. Talking about loving the brethren. I love you. I'm telling you the truth. I love you. I want to give you the things that Yahshua made manifest to me. And if you can't take it, if it sounds crazy, then do your due diligence. You search. You listen, you read, you take notes. And go in by that straight gate. Go in by the little three foot, three feet gate. Don't go in by that wide gate that's at the court roundabout. Because we're right there getting ready to step in. With that, I'll say hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The floor is still open. Whoever wants to go next. Can you hear me, Carla? Oh. Yes, sir. Okay. Is it? You said you can hear? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, I would like uh, somebody to get Revelations 4.11. And also, I want somebody to look up the word visit. Now, when I refer to visit, I, I want everybody to be conscious of the fact that I'm not saying, you know, we live and move and have our being in Yahweh. And Yahweh is always ever present. So when I use this term, I don't want you to think he's coming from the sky somewhere. But I want to make a point here. Give me somebody read Revelation 411 first. Revelations 4.11, thou art worthy, O Yahweh, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Now, what well, Yahweh is showing me about this, they get hung up when they say Yahweh when I was creating business, what he, he did do. But Yahweh gave me all Romans 1, 19 and 20. That didn't mean Yahweh was going to stop participating. He just had read that they was created for his pleasure. So think about yourself. The things you do for your pleasure, don't you participate in it? And the point I want to make tonight is they still got Yahweh off in the abstract somewhere. Now, you can't never get all of Yahweh into shape and form, but nevertheless, Yahweh is here to participate, you know, in this thing. Matter of fact, from ages and dispensation, Yahweh is always participate in his purpose. That's and you right. look at the word, his story, Yahweh is telling his story. He wrote the story. He back there with Moses. He was writing it then, and he came in to fulfill his story. Somebody give me a definition of visit. 
visit to go and stay with someone, a person or a family or at a place for a short time to stay with as a guest, to come or go to, to go to for the purpose of official inspection or examination, to come to in order to comfort or aid, to access, to come upon, to afflict. Okay, that's good. Go ahead. You looking for anyone in particular? Well, I was going to add to that. I have, yeah, I'm going to add. I have, uh, okay. I got this one. Um, it says, okay, I'm, in occasion. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. It says, in a matter occasion. Fact, I was going to mm -hmm. say that any, any of my scripture readers, uh, anybody, y'all would put on my heart and mind to say this too. If you feel free to add in to or make commentaries, you know, as you see fit, I know my time is limited, but y'all would put on my heart and mind to, to you know, to, to, to put that out there anyway. But go ahead, go ahead, Carla. It says, an occasion when someone goes to a place to see and talk to someone for usually a brief time, an occasion when someone goes to a place for pleasure as part of a job to do something, et cetera. And that's good. The one I got to is well with Chad, I come verse. I guess someone read Hebrews 2 and 6. Hebrews 2 and 6, but one, but one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? See, thou madest, Go ahead. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownedest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. And you go back there and pick that up with... Uh, and created the man Adam. He gave him dominion over all the beasts of the field. But my point being, people, we got to get Yahweh out of the abstract. Somebody, you can't know nothing about it. Yahweh came personally himself and told all his sons about himself. That's right. Get Genesis 18, 1 and 2. Then I want you to skip and read 20 and 21 and pause. Genesis 18, 1 and 2. And Yahweh appeared unto him in the oaks of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes, and he saw, and behold, three men stood by him. And when Pause, he saw, Shirley. Mm -hmm. Pause. Three men. Now that tells me they had on bodies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this was no vision. Now we're reading Moses' you know, vision that he had. And once again, telling his story. But these real people, they had own bodies. Read. Right. And when he saw, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the earth. Matter of fact, they ate. They washed some feet. Let's skip on down to 20 and 21. And Yahweh said, because the cry of some Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me. And it's now he not. already knew. He already knew because we're going to pick it up in uh, Exodus, the third chapter. Now he already knew what was going on. You understand? But like I said, y'all have always participated in all his creations. Read. And if not, I will know. That was a 21st. Okay, we don't well. I think you're going to ask them some questions here. 22nd. And the men turned their faces from this and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before Yahweh. And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Listen, people. Earth. Abraham is talking to Yahweh face to face in a body. Read. Peradventure there, there be 50 righteous within the city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? 
<clears throat> that be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked. And that righteous should be as the wicked that be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And okay, Yahweh that's good, said, Shirley. I think we skipped over, but like I'm limited from my time, but uh, Yahweh told Abraham, Have, should I hide anything from you seeing you're going to be heir of a nation? So everything, you know, he letting him in on what his prayer, pattern of papers and plan is. This is not no blind faith. You understand? Mm -hmm. I get Exodus the third chapter. Pick it up by seven and eight so we can um, get the points and I'll be through. Exodus 3 and 7, and Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a this good was a land. Great, it was a great esoteric secret when we came in class, knowing that that creator of heaven and earth was already down in Egypt for some 30 right. years with a body on. People, I'd never heard nothing like you understand? Well, I ain't go to church a whole lot, you understand? <laughs> but I don't think they was preaching that in the churches, you understand? Mm -hmm. Read on. And to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jebusites. Yahweh declaring I'm, the end from the beginning. You go all the way back and pick that up. Like I'm skipping a whole lot with, with the promise that was made to Abraham. He had already declared the end for the, from the beginning. Now he's coming in, people, and making it happen himself. Read. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh. Hold up. Now, he said, come now. So obviously, he was down. He was already there. Mm -hmm. You understand? And he was telling Moses to come on where I am. See, that's one of the things they understand. These people, Yahweh, ooh, he's talking about the ever presence of Yahweh. In whatever form, matter of fact, in all three forms, he, he, can, he, can, he can be ever present. I'm getting too excited, but read on. Stop when you get to the 12th. Okay. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto Elohim, who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, certainly I will be with thee. Holy and right, this, certainly I will be with thee. Moses. Moses understood that. Moses partook of that. Finish that thought, Shirley. I want you to skip to numbers. This, I want somebody getting... Go ahead. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the, the people out of Egypt, you shall serve Elohim upon this mountain. Okay, somebody give me Numbers 12, 6 through 8. I'm going to kind of end and write with that. You got two I'm gonna, Okay, I'm gonna, somebody get that right quick. Numbers 12, 6 through 8. And he said, let me say this too. Hold up, before you read this, this is a losing battle when you're looking at flesh and blood and think you're talking about a man. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yahweh is not to be played with. I don't care what body is, from, from babes on up to adults. But read on. 12, 6. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, Yahweh, will make myself known unto him in a vision. Hold up, did you, hold up, Vanessa. Did I hear you correctly say, I, Yahweh, will make myself what? Known? Known. That's right. That's right. Did I hear you? Did you read that correctly? I, I did. Thank you. Read on. 
I, Yahweh, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him, I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of Yahweh, he beholds. Where okay, hold it, Vanessa. Because of time, I'm going to end it like, I'm going to end it right there. And I know Yahweh will give the increase of and reveal to us those things that are needful. And I'll say, I truly have enjoyed that Yahweh have allowed me to participate in these classes in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. With those few words, like I always say, I thank Yahweh for giving me ears to hear and uh, one love for all. Thank you. Hallelujah. Before the next speaker comes on, I need to straighten up one thing. When I said that Dr. Boston was saying all that was, you know, in my heart and mind, and he speaks the truth, I'm not praising the man. I am giving thanks to the spirit in that man that keeps his words straight, that keeps them falling truthfully and not sending you on earth winding path. All right. Very good. All right. We're still open. I want to go, Carla. Oh. Okay. Um, good evening, brethren. First of all, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to my heavenly father, Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua. truly blessed, brethren. When I was out of town, I looked at all those people, all these people on a face that I see on, on the world, on the earth, on this trip. And do you know those people don't know anything about Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua? But we do. And he brought us into class. It sat us down and taught us something about his purpose. He picked us out out of all these people. And sometimes I look at, I go through things and I say, I'm even worthy. But you know what? Yahshua say, yes, you are. Because I picked you. Just like he picked those disciples and those apostles. He picked all of us and called us all into this class. We are, it's truly a blessing, brother. And I'm telling you guys, it's truly a blessing. That we have Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua in our life. Because without him, what are we? I know I ain't, I ain't nothing. I can't do nothing without him. I need him in my life every minute, every second of the day. And I just want to praise and give him honor and glory and thank him for all he has done, whether I understood it or not, whether it was bad or whether it was so called good. I just want to thank him for everything. And we need to be appreciative of this teaching and grateful of this teaching because people out there in the world don't know these things. And he allowed us to come in here and learn these things. And another thing he put on my heart, I gave this testimony a while back about, can somebody please look up the word perspective, please. Now, perspective he put this on my heart one evening i was just sitting in the bed i wasn't thinking about anything but when he come and give you a revelation it's wonderful and he gave me this word perspective and do you know that word means so much because do you have the word perspective yes ma'am uh, Can you go ahead and read it, please? Yes. A particular attitude toward or way of regarding something, a point of view, 
a viewpoint, a point of view, a frame of mind, a position, angle, approach, stance, attitude. Mm. Now you see that if we just put in perspective how vast and how awesome Yahweh really is by putting things in perspective, we won't even think about trying to put ourselves up on a so-called pedestal or anything. We is nothing when it comes to him. But yet he still loves us and had mercy on us. And that word perspective, I looked it up. It got so many meanings. It means righteousness. It means enduring. It means a lots of things. And he put that on my heart one evening to look that word up. And he said, if you just put that in perspective, you will be all right. Because we have to put, as he was, was showing me, put things in perspective. And knowing that Yahweh, the creator, is above all, in all, and through all. And sometimes that's hard for the natural man to comprehend that it's Yahweh. Everything is Yahweh and that he created the whole world and everybody on it. That is, that is really awesome. And that he made a woman to have a life in her that she could be bringing forth a life in her. That is so awesome to me. And that the things we go through, he there for us and pick us right up and bring us out of that death barrier. And we know it's going to be a resurrection. Why? Because he showed us that he did it. He died on that cross for us, a death, a barrier, and a resurrection. And we go through this every day of our life. We go to sleep. We dare to sleep. We bury in the cover. And what do we do? We resurrect it. And we go through our problems. The things we go through and we dead and bury in that. But what does he do? He bring us out of it. He give us a resurrection. And we go back over and over and over and over again. Why? To bring us to a point and to teach and show us that it's me. It's nobody else. And he is such a powerful, awesome Elohim. Words that we speak from a natural standpoint can even describe how he really is and actually exists. He is just too powerful. And just to see that these people, you have to look at the, I mean, look the world. They don't understand the things that we know and do. This gospel, they don't understand it. They don't want, unless he opened up their eyes the way he did it to us. But they don't know. And we do. And that's a blessing. We should always count that as a blessing. That we are his. He picked us out and brought us in here. And sought us down and gave us something. Gave us the truth. The truth. Yahshua is the truth. He didn't give us no lie. He said you could come and learn and know and learn something of me. Learn about me. He didn't keep no secret. He, I mean, I'm telling y'all, this is just a beautiful thing. It's just an awesome thing. And this is what he put on my heart. And I just wanted to Share that with you, brethren. Because sometimes when you're going through stuff, put things in perspective and be grateful for everything he has done for you. Because even we take things for granted. We have a roof over our head. We have food. Some people don't have those things. But yet he provides for us. He make a way for his children. This is just wonderful. Every time I think about it, that he loves us. Why? Because he died for us. 
got up on that cross and was treated as an outcast dog for us. So let's appreciate and be grateful for the things he have done for us and showed us. Let's not forget these things because we need him. He don't need us. We need him. But yet he had mercy on us and brought us into class and to teach us something about his purpose, pattern, and plan of salvation. And I am so grateful to that. And just like Dr. Janet said, doesn't matter how long you be in class, we all gonna get that same penny, the same penny. And what is that? We all want eternal life and peace, joy, and happiness. So that what we are striving for, that's what we are hoping for, Yahshua. And we know that he done been with us through all our trials and tribulations, that he's going to give that to us. And I just want to say this, brethren, just be appreciative of Yahweh for the things he has done. So people out there don't know, y'all. Those people are in darkness. And we don't, and we not. It's just something, especially in the time we're living in now, at the end time. We are. He just, he just gave, he just had mercy on us. These things are wonderful, brethren. That he had mercy on us and brought us into class. These people out there, some people out in the world don't know these things. But he did it for us, and it's a marvelous thing. It's great. And I just want to say, he put that on my heart so strong today that we, that Yahshua love us because he come and he gave it. now is sit and learn and listen when the Holy Spirit is speaking through vessels we have to that's all we have to do and I just want to say thank you Yahweh Elohim and Yahshua and I just want to say I love all of you all my brethren whether the ones I see or not thank you and I just want to say all praise, honor, and glory go to Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua. And with these and many other blessings, that's all we have to do. Hallelujah. And I just want to say thank you, Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua. And I just want to say I love all of you. All okay. 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 Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm thankful to have a testimony and I've enjoyed the words of Yahweh thus far. I'm thankful to, that Yahweh has come and given us a testimony, uh, uh, revealed himself unto us because if it wasn't for that, we would have nothing. We would know nothing concerning his purpose and plan. And as was spoken in the scripture lesson, the Messiah said, I have declared unto them thy name. And I am so forever grateful for that because without the name being declared unto us, we would not know who to worship and how to worship him. So we all do have something to be thankful for. Uh, one thing I wanted to share is where Yahweh has had me looking at um, about knowing him and um, it's a topic that really needs to be looked at by all to understand the things that we say we have come to know and believe about Yahweh. Uh, we could not come to know or believe anything about him if he's incomprehensible. Because as, right. spoken, as spoken in Monday night's uh, foundation class, uh, it was so beautiful where Yahweh pointed out that uh, the only thing that cannot comprehend 
Yahweh is a carnal mind. And if we be obedient and go to the, the words of Yahweh in this Bible, in the scriptures that he laid down for us, we can understand clearer. Instead of us just reading verses and quoting verses, we need to ask ourselves questions about what do they mean instead of just saying something to be saying something. And that's where Yahweh has had me at. Look at what you say you believe. Ask yourself the question because it's not the answer. It's the question that we need to know. And so if you say Yahweh is not comprehensible, then uh, as was spoken in Monday night's class was that it's because the common mind cannot comprehend the things of Yahweh because Yahweh is spirit. Now, when you go in Yahweh, uh, the vision that he gave to Moses where Yahweh said that in the beginning, he created the heavens and the earth and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And Yahweh said, let there be light and there was light. And it goes on to say, and Yahweh divides the light from the darkness. Then you go to John, it said, I think the first chapter, it said uh, he was the light and the dark, oh, let me get it if I get it messed up. And the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. The darkness is the only thing that cannot comprehend the light. So if we are in the light, then it is possible to know. Now, what, what Yahweh showed me was, and I think a couple of classes ago, he mentioned that we cannot limit Yahweh to our imagination. That's the big mistake. We got Yahweh all messed up in our minds according to our thinking. You know, so it's what we think about it. But see, Yahweh eliminated all of that. Do you believe his words or not? Those are the questions we need to ask ourselves. So when you look at how this uh, mix up came into play where you don't know whether or not Yahweh is comprehensible or not, all you have to do is ask yourself some questions. So Yahweh was showing me uh, where the problem came in at, talking about the darkness cannot comprehend. Now, in our imagination, we can't limit Yahweh to our imagination. You go to Genesis 6 and 5, and he said, and Yahweh saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Uh, Psalms 94 and 11, Yahweh knoweth the thoughts of man that they are vain. They are vanity. And the Messiah said, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulterers, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemy, blasphemies, and so forth. Now that shows us what the thoughts of the man is all about. So that's why we can't put our thoughts on how we want Yahweh to be. Because uh, there, there's even proof positive now that our thoughts on how we want Yahweh to be, we got him as a trinity. Some of us had him as a trinity by not recognizing that Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua are one. John 17 chapter that we just read and the scripture lesson, that they may know that thou only art the true El and Yahshua Messiah whom thou hast sent. But our thoughts, our imaginations, the way we perceive a thing to be is how we can get things all messed up, messed up instead of sticking with it, just what Yahweh said about it. Now, Yahweh got rid of cleared up all of these scriptures I just read about the man's thoughts in Isaiah 55 and 8. He said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, says Yahweh. Now that's cut and dry, which means that we need to get our thoughts off of it and just go on what thus says Yahweh. Now that's what Moses had to do, right? In Exodus, the third chapter, he said, uh, that he saw Yahweh, he saw the angel in the burning bush. I'm going to read myself because it's uh, short on time. In the third chapter, he said, And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. 
Now, what Moses was seeing there at that point, he saw that going on. But at that point, he didn't know what was going on. The next verse said, and Moses said, I will now turn aside. Now, aside means away from one's thoughts. He said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight while the bush does not burn. And when Yahweh saw that he turned aside to see, Elohim called unto him out of the midst of the bush and spoke unto him and revealed himself unto him. Now, when we see these great things that Yahweh is showing us, and unless we turn away from our thoughts about it, we are really not going to understand it. That's what makes it incomprehensible is because of our thoughts about how it should be or shouldn't be. Now, question. What does incomprehensible mean? You know, I am so tired of somebody saying that I can't be Yahweh because he, he's incomprehensible. What does incomprehensible mean? It means impossible to understand. Impossible to understand. Now, so if Yahweh is incomprehensible, then and we just leave it like that because of our thoughts, then we're going against the first aim to help you find and know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. We're going against Romans 119 and 20 that we utter all of the time without stopping and looking at what we're saying. Because that, that may be known of Yahweh that, that may be known of Yahweh. Now, it sounds like me that that's, that means that you can understand something or know something because know and understand are, 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 are mixing there together, right? Comprehend means to understand the nature or meaning of, to grasp with the mind, to perceive. Perceive means to become aware of, to know, to identify, to recognize, to discern, to understand. Now, if, uh, if any of these words are clicking with you and you say you understand, you say you know Yahweh, you can't say in another breath that he's incomprehensible. That just doesn't go together. That's carnal. And so, and then we utter things like this. After we say uh, we know Yahweh, I mean, after we say he's incomprehensible, we'll make a statement like this. How can uh, that Yahweh gave us a significant amount of intelligence to know and understand his purpose? Uh, what does that mean? If he gave us a significant amount of intelligence to know and understand his purpose, then you say in another breath, we can't be Yahweh because he's incomprehensible. And that's a contradiction. That's a carnal mind. Those are carnal thoughts. The carnal mind is that enmity against Yahweh is not subject to Yahweh. That's why you got an opposition there when you put your thoughts on it. That is why Yahweh said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. We need to ask ourselves questions. What did he mean by that? That's where he's had me all week is asking myself questions about the things I say out of my own mouth. What do you mean by that when you say that? What do you mean by that when you quote that? from the Bible. Don't just be saying something just to be saying something. You got to look at all of this. Look at it. <laughs> and that means that you have to, uh, one of the synonyms of comprehend is to scrutinize. That means you have to examine in detail with careful or critical attention to the matter. And the founder said, you got to make a detailed investigation to every matter, every secular matter, to understand it. And um, so the thoughts of a man cannot comprehend the mind of Yahweh. So I want us to, my testimony tonight is for all of us to be still 
and examine the things that you say you know and believe. Examine the words that you repeat. You know, don't just be repeating it because you heard somebody else say it. We were told a long time ago, if you understand something, repeat it. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Repeat what the founder said or repeat what's in the book or repeat what you heard another brother say through preaching. If you understand it, repeat it. If you don't understand it, you don't need to be repeating it. You need to examine it. You need to look at it to see what it means. Just like this great question, this great statement that's being made here so often, Yahshua is in me. I can't be Yahweh, I'm Yahshua. What does that mean, you're Yahshua? Yahshua is in me. How is Yahshua in you? What does that mean? These are questions that you need to stop and ask. I've always testified to the fact that Yahweh made me not afraid to ask questions. I want to ask questions. I don't care if they sound scary or Yahweh may get, I used to think Yahweh may get upset with me by asking questions that I probably should already know. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. If any man lacks wisdom, they are to ask of Yahweh. So my testimony tonight is for us all to settle down. Settle down, be still, and know. And in order for you to know, you got to examine it. You got to ask questions about the things you say you believe. You make statements, you got to ask yourself questions. What, what does that mean that Yahweh is incomprehensible? Because if you stop and ask yourself a question about it and examine it in detail, then you're going to find out that he's not incomprehensible. And if he is incomprehensible, that means that, I mean, the bottom line is that means that you're still looking at it from a carnal standpoint. You're putting your thoughts and imaginations on it. So let's just seek Yahweh. Let's, let's worship him in spirit and in truth and not with our thoughts about it. That's how the adversary keeps us confused and, and misunderstood you know, not understanding it's by our thoughts, putting our thoughts on it. So my, my um, prayer to Yahweh is that he continue to do as a founder, uh, preach so much about uh, in a lot, on his uh, latter, a lot of his latter lectures, I remember him emphasizing so strongly that we need to get a profound knowledge and understanding of his purpose. Profound. We need to look deeper than what we've been looking just on the surface because we think we know something. We think we have come to know something. That's when we need to stop and examine what we say we know and believe. So I hope something's been said to stir up our pure mind so that we can go on to perfection by getting a more profound knowledge and understanding of Yahweh. All glory and honor goes unto Yahweh, and I thank you. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> All right, the floor is still open. I'll speak All up, right. Carla. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening to the body, to those who are aware and conscious of the ever presence of Yahweh, and also to those who are constantly looking unto, unto that, expecting Yahweh to, uh, to come in and to bring that reality to, to light. Uh, I've enjoyed what's been said, and um, uh, I'm going to do a little reading here. I need, we need us to go back to Exodus 3 and 14. And then uh, Zechariah 14 and 9. Um, and also I need uh, um, Ephesians, the um, third chapter, and I think about the 14th verse. We'll start with that, and then we'll go from there. This, uh, this that the speakers just got through referring to um, and, and about examining and looking at what we're what we've been given, we have to remember that uh, that we're dealing with uh, that that is um, 
eternal. And in uh, understanding that, we, we're talking about that that created all things and that it was uh, it, it's self-sufficient, self-sustaining. So uh, when we talk about Exodus 3 and 14, and uh, let's read that for me, please. Exodus 3, 14. And Elohim said unto Moses, Aya, Asher, Aya. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I will be, had sent me unto you. So Yahweh is in introducing himself to Moses, and this is before even giving the name. He's telling him that I will be, has sent me. Uh, you tell him that that's who has been sent unto them. Yahweh is, in saying this, this is the beginning or the crux of us, us being still and understanding that we're Yahweh. Uh, being still and knowing that, because at this point, Moses was given the um, uh, introduction into all that was ever made and all that will be made. And what we have here is Yahweh showing us that spirit. Spirit has, you cannot, uh, you cannot tie it down to being what we think it is in our mind. Spirit can be whatever it will to be. And it has shown us that by us finding out that Yahweh did come and Yahweh himself is in his purpose. And, I, and see, I can't say that enough because it is him in me as well as in you hearing and receiving what's being given. So if you, if you, when you come to know that it is, that this is of Yahweh, then you have to settle down as the previous speaker just said, settle down in that. You, 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 you have to realize that you are not flesh and blood. And, and I don't, I'm, I'm preaching to myself as well, that this is not about people, places, and things, but this is about the spirit of Yahweh in operation for a purpose. And Yahweh himself has come and given us of himself. Before, you, uh, before we go to the other verses, give me the scripture lesson. Go back to the scripture lesson and start at the... Uh, Exodus 3, 21st verse. No, 20th verse. John, this, this scripture lesson was perfect because it puts us right where we are now. Read. John 17 and 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. So Yahshua is the middle branch in the, tab in, in the uh, uh, lampstand. And that branch was filled in the middle, in that middle branch. And it sealed the rest of the branches in it. In other words, he was the, uh, the, the oil that was poured in there. He was the candlestick itself. And he filled the whole, the whole candlestick from one end to the other. Before the flood, back to Adam, all the way to the end of this creation. It is Yahweh, it, uh, Yahshua, being that middle branch, when he went to the cross, died, buried, and resurrected, and fulfilled the purpose then that caused all of us to be able to come to this realization that we are Yahweh. And I hope to show you that as we go finish this. Read on. 21st verse, that they all may be one as thou that, art. That they all may be one. They may be one. Zechariah 14 and 9, and we'll come right back. Zechariah 14 and 9, and Yahweh shall be king over all the earth. It, now, now, this was before the Messiah came in. He shall be king over all the earth. We know now that he is king over all the earth. That's your earthly body as well as this earth that you're standing upon. Read. And in that day, Yahweh will prove to be a unity. He would prove to be a unity, read. And with one name. And with just one name. Just one name. Now go back to John 17. John 17, 21. That they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee. Carla, put up the, uh, pull up the, uh, the Moses chart or the elementary chart, please. Read. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Now, when you look at the chart here, go back, Carl. I'm sorry, this it's the elementary or the uh, Moses chart. When you go back and you look at this chart here, you have Yahweh as a unity. 
you have Yahweh in pure spirit as the father, Yahweh taking on a, a super incorporeal shape and form as Elohim, and Yahweh manifested in the physical body as the savior of the world. Now, this cloud that's going all the way around this chart is Yahweh. So if that's Yahweh, then what else can anything else in it be other than the spirit of Yahweh manifested for one purpose or another? So it behooves us to understand that spirit can be all that it wills to be. So we have three mysteries. We have the mystery of iniquity, the mystery of righteousness, and the mystery of Yahweh, which is the mystery of iniquity and righteousness is contained in the mystery of Yahweh. So if you understand the mystery of Yahweh, then you can understand what he's doing in the other two mysteries. One is a contrast of the other in order that you may understand the power. As he told Pharaoh, even for the same purpose, have I raised thee up that, they may sh that I may show forth my power in thee. So the mysteries are contained in the mystery of Yahweh, see? So then we have to come to that. We have to know both mysteries in order for us to be set free. Because that's the truth. Read. 22nd verse, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. One in the knowledge and the understanding of the truth. Read. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in unity. Read. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Read. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. Now, he wanted them to be with him where he is. That's now. He's standing in the, it, it, he is in the bosom of the Father. Read. That they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O Read. righteous Father, O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have. He has known also thee. known us before the foundation of the world. That's why we're saying that spirit, you can't put any limitation on spirit. See, before the foundation of the world, where were you before you were put in the mother's womb or your father's loin? See, you've got to ask those kind of questions. And I'm not, I'm preaching to myself as well, because it's needful for us to know those things in order for us to be raised up out of this physical, natural existence. Read. The world has not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. So then you should count yourself blessed, as the previous speaker was saying, to have received this knowledge and have received this understanding. And I do count myself blessed, having received them. Read. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. And it was all done in the name. Now, mm. that's what's important, the name. Go to Ephesians 3 and 14. To start at 13. Ephesians 3, 13. Page. Um, Wherefore, I desire that ye faint not at any tribulation, at my tribulations for you, which is Saul's is. letter unto the Ephesians. Read Vanessa, I'm sorry. Wherefore, I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Read. Of, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So who's, what name is given to the whole family in heaven and earth? Yahweh. That's the name that's given. That's the only name that's given. See, when we come to the reality of the understanding that it was Yahweh from the beginning, and it's going to be Yahweh in the end, then that's, that's what it takes in order for us to be resurrected. And I'm, I'm saying that like this because until a, a man who has amnesia find out what his true name is, he cannot rest. He cannot have peace. He cannot, he cannot find himself until he find out where he comes from. The same thing with an adopted child. Until he understands where he, his origin is, he cannot be satisfied. So the same thing with us. 
we have to accept who we are and what we are because there is only he's going to be proved to be one name to be a unity and with one name there's not a there's not a bunch of it's easy Yahshua was Yahweh Yahshua means Yahweh is salvation so it gives us the ability to see that our name truly is Yahweh see Yahweh Elohim was the word the word was made flesh we're looking at the self same thing but the consciousness of coming to that is the acceptance of who you are. You can't be anything else other than Yahweh because Yahweh was the one who created everything. You look at the fact that you came in by uh, with your mother and father's uh, uh, intercourse and you had the spermogenetic fluid that you didn't have any particular shape and form in. You just, you see what I'm saying? But whatever it takes, whatever it was meant, how you would be when you come into existence, it was all in that cloud. It was all in that form. And then that form had to go through its 40-week gestation before it came out and presented itself as a, a, an image, the likeness an image of what Yahweh Elohim is. So it's the same spirit, but the manifestation of it is changing. So you have to, we have to accept the fact that it is him in us just as we are. You, Dr. Kendall used to say it like this, be yourself, because can't nobody else beat you being yourself. But you have to know who yourself is and you have to rest in who you are and come to that. Read down to the fourth, go to the fourth chapter of Vanessa and start at the third verse and I'm through. Two minutes. Yes, so ma'am. Three. <laughs> Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. See, so that's, that's, that's what we're about. That's why we're talking about Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua, just like the blood, the water, and the spirit are the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, or the, or the uh, 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 spirit, soul, and body is what I want to get. We are one body, but we are spirit, we are soul, and we are body. We know the flesh has to be done away with. We understand that the soul of the man had to be reunited when that, when that uh, 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 veil in the temple was rent in twain. But for, for where we have to get to is that that concept of the flesh and that sixth step has to be eradicated. You have to look on into, as the previous speaker would say, look on in there and see Yahweh as he really is and as he actually exists. Because that's your that that's your only purpose is to know who you are and where you come from. Because that's what it was in the beginning. That's what it is in the end. Read Vanessa, I'm sorry. There is one body. There is one, one body. And one spirit. And just one spirit. What is that one spirit? That is Yahweh. All in all, read. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Elohim, mm -hmm. one faith, mm -hmm. one baptism. If you went to uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, you say we were all baptized into one body and by that one spirit, which is Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua, the Messiah itself. Read. One is Yahweh. Just and one, read. And Father of all, read, who is above all, and through all, and in you all, in, in you all, and we're well, gonna have to close it down. But that's that we have come to what we need to come to is our acceptance of the truth that will get us over. And I, when I say the acceptance, that's that's you finding out or doing the research or doing the the the, the uh, uh, asking Yahweh within yourself. Let me just do it that way because. That is really what it takes. It takes you asking Yahweh within yourself, not outside of yourself, to know him as he really is and actually exists. With that, I thank you, and I hope I didn't mess that up too bad. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Dr. Boston, you want to close this out? Yes, ma'am. I'll close it out. <clears throat> First of all, let me say good evening to everyone I've enjoyed. The expressions of those who uh, Yahweh put it in their heart to give a testimony. And I want to try to keep this as tight as I can. I want to stray away too much. But I do want to try to get this across. When we say that we are Yahweh, and we are not the one saying that, Yahweh told us that's what we were. 
That's who That's told right. us that. That's right. You understand? He told us that we are him in an unconscious state. That's what he said. Now what he has to do is to make you understand how you are Yahweh in an unconscious state. See? Now when you're looking at Yahweh, where do you have Yahweh at right now? Where is he to you? Where is he at right now? Because, see, when you speak of Yahweh, you're talking about Yahshua taking you to Yahweh and you're going back. You got him way off somewhere in your mind that you got to try to travel to get to him. That's not how that is. Yahweh is ever present, people. He has never gone anywhere. There's no place for Yahweh to go. Where is he going? He can't get outside of himself because there ain't no such thing. Because you can't see him out of sight, out of mind. But Yahweh is ever present in all things carrying out his will. And it burns me to hear people say that they're not Yahweh or they can't be Yahweh. They would say Yahweh is, became the sun, the moon, the stars, the earth, the water, the atmosphere, the fish in the sea, the bacteria, the virus, even Fido in the backyard <laughs> is Yahweh. But somehow or another, you escaped. See? He became everything but you. <laughs> and I enjoyed your testimony, Shirley, because you was right on the money. That was right on point. You need to examine these That's things a lot more closer instead of just repeating something that you heard and you haven't truly examined it for yourself to look into it to see exactly what is that about. For the Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of Yahweh. You want to know where you come from. You want to know who you really are. When you was born into that, this world, that's where you got your identity, your earthly identity. You didn't have a clue when you come into this world. You didn't know you were spirit in a body. That's what you are. You are spirit first. Then the soul came afterwards. Then the body. And I tried to do this where I think the last lecture I gave. The sperm and the egg forms your physical body. It does not form the spirit. It does not form the soul. That's the spirit right. forms the soul. The spirit forms the body. That shower in there forming the body. Then he gets in it in the process of forming it. And give it life. Now here he brings you into this world making your heart beat, causing you to breathe, you don't know he's in you. You don't know who you are at that point. Or at any point in this world. You come into this world, your eyes open, you see light, you hear noise, you feel cold. Now you begin to experience what this world is about. All of those experiences... And you're growing up in this world and learning who your parents, physical parents are, got to go to school, got to go to church, God up in the sky, all the things that you inherited and learned since you come into this world form your mind. That's who and what you thought you were. And you still believe that that's what you are. Yahweh is somewhere else. You're separate from him in your mind.
That's not the way that is. That spirit of Yahweh formed you. That's where you come from. Now that part of you, because you are spirit, soul, and body, that part of you, see, I'll put it this way. The spirit in you became you in a carnal state and condition. But it was still attached to the spirit. It was never disconnected except in the consciousness of it. That's right. Now what has to happen, you got to be brought back to consciousness. You were rendered a knocked unconscious. You see? You have to understand and believe what the report that Yahweh has given us. We all died in Adam. How are you walking around dead? Except to be psychological and spiritual. Spiritual death. Meaning you have no knowledge of spirit. That's a spiritual death. Now you must die out of who you became. And all the thoughts and disposition that goes along with that, you must die out of that. And what makes you or cause you to die out of that is the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding that Yahweh is giving you of himself. There was no other spirit to become anything other than Yahweh. You didn't create yourself. If you didn't come from Yahweh, well, where did you come from? And I told you, Yahweh ain't going nowhere. Paul even wrote, he said, Yahweh's above all. Meaning, in superior knowledge and understanding. Intelligence. He's above all. And he's through all. I gave you that example with the molecules flowing through the, your body and the house that you're living in. That's why your house be creaking. You understand? Oh, you see it going through change. Because it's expanding and contracting. Those molecules are constantly moving. It represents Yahweh being through all. And he's in all. But you won't let that come into your mind. You won't let that sink in. You still got him way off from you somewhere. When you speak of Yahweh, you got him outside of you. That has to change. See, you haven't accepted the fact that he's in you, even though the book tells you that. Your Bible also tells you that you are Elohim. You will accept that. John, on the Isle of Patmos, wrote in the Fourth chapter of uh, 1 John, the 16th verse, on down, he said that we are as he is right now. But we let that go by. We don't accept that either. We can't be Yahweh. I'm not Yahweh. No, you're not in that state and condition of mind. See? You're a color-minded man or woman in that state and condition. See? So you have to die out of that and come back to who you really are. You understand? And that's Yahweh. He's the one that became you and I. He will to be you. He will to be me. He will to be Fido. He will to be the heaven and the earth. He will to be the angels. He will to be everything that exists. Ain't nothing you can do with that. You can argue against it all you want. That ain't going to change that reality. Now let me try to come down into this thing and do it this way. Uh, ooh uh, Luke 
Luke 17 and 20, King James Version. Acts 26, 16. And Colossians 1 and, 1 and 12. And Colossians 2 and 5. I'm trying to pinpoint this and help you out to help you to understand how you're Yahweh. We are his offspring. That's where we come from. That's what we are. We are spirit materialized. See? Let me read this one right quick. Go to uh, John 17, I think it's uh, the scripture lesson. That's 17, 14, I believe it is. John 17, 14. I have given them I have given them thy word and the world will hate them because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. Now you see that? Yahweh's children are not of this world. We were sent down here and subjected unto Satan and those satanic demons that was cast out of heaven, just as Israel was sent down into Egypt and subjected to the Egyptians. Yahweh called Israel his son. Out of Egypt have I called my son. See? Look at what they were subjected to. You understand? They were worshiping idols down there. When they got into the wilderness and Yahweh spoke the law to them and told them not to bring have no other ill before him, anything that's in the heavens or on the earth or creeping, you understand? And what did they do? They built a golden calf right out there in front of him. Now the wilderness, that's the holy place. That's where the change has to take place. That's For right. Yahweh changed into the physical through Elohim. That's the holy place, Elohim. That's the second heaven. I'm trying to get you to understand, folks. There's nothing going back to Yahweh but Yahweh himself. You read it in your book. No man has ascended into heaven, but he that descended. It was Yahweh Elohim that descended, and it's Yahweh Elohim that's going back. We make up his body. And as I try to get you to understand, when we talk about making up his body, I'm not talking about you being a leg or a foot or a toe or an arm or this one being... You're scared of this, you understand? That's not how that is. That's not how we're making up the body. We are spirit. That's what he is. Ain't no flesh and blood in him. We are wisdom. We are knowledge. We are understanding. We are the intelligence of Yahweh manifested. That's what we are. Consciousness that you have to come back to. You're not human beings as you thought you were. See? You've already lived that life. Paul put it like this. Just as we have born the earth there, we shall also bear the heavenly. But you got to die out of the earthly. And so Israel had to make that change in the wilderness or in the holy place. See, they was having orgies while Moses up in the mount, getting instructions from Yahweh. You understand that? Singing and dancing. And what did Yahweh do? Moses waxed hot. That's Yahweh anger being expressed through Moses. As he said, with Moses, I speak mouth to mouth. Whatever Moses said, that's me saying it. And he threw down those tables of stones. See? That Yahweh Elohim has written on. And Yahweh charged the Levites to strap on their swords 
Did you know priests had weapons? They had swords. Okay, don't no, let's not go there. So they went through the camp and they killed 3,000 that day. How did they know who to kill? The rest of them died in the wilderness. Those men of war that came up out of Egypt wandered around them 40 years and died. That's Israel dying out of that old man. That generation that was born out there, that's what went on over. Being led by Yahshua, the Holy Spirit, the knowledge of the truth. That's what leads you back to the consciousness of who you are if you believe and accept it. They are not of this world, as I am not of this world. Get Hebrews 2.14. Hebrews 2.14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. I hold it right there. What was he before he took on him flesh and blood? What was he before he did that? You see how you have to put these things together and think about these things and meditate on them? He was spirit. That's right. So was his children. If you go to Psalms, 139th division, the 14th verse on down, he said, all my members was being formed when as yet there was none of them. That's right. And I try to give you that example when Yahweh made that promise to Abraham and told him he's going to give him a seed, multiply his seed as the sands of the sea and as the stars of heaven, send him into a land that was not there and be held in body, after which he's going to come in and bring him out into a land full of milk and Abraham was 75 years old when Yahweh made that promise. He did not have not one child. But Yahweh declared the end from the very beginning that was Abraham. All his children, when Yahweh spoke that, all his children was being formed or fashioned when as yet there was none of them. It was already set up how they was coming out. Look at Esau and Jacob. Jacob have I love. Esau have I hated. When there was none of them, Yahweh said, you understand? Neither child had ever done any good or evil, neither had been born. But that the purpose of Yahweh, according to election, might stand, he said he loved Jacob and he hated Esau. That was done before the world ever was. We are his offspring. That's how you're Yahweh. You're not the totality. You ain't create nothing. But you still yet Yahweh. Ain't nothing else for you to be except the devil. All right. You understand? You ain't got to try to figure out how you did it. You ain't did nothing. Hmm? Yahweh did. You are an offspring. And as it said there in the book, and we are, as one of the speakers said tonight, you understand? We are joint heirs with the Messiah. What? Joint heirs of what? What are we inheriting? All oh, that Yahweh is. Right, Yahweh. That's, that's right. ours. That belong to us. When I say us, I ain't talking about flesh and blood. I'm talking about wisdom, knowledge, understanding. That's us. That's right. You gotta recognize yourself as being rather than a flesh and blood man or woman. You got to die out of that state of consciousness. All right. I'm not fussing, folks. I'm just excited and passionate about what I'm looking at, what Yahweh has given me to give to you. And that's where it's coming from. This is not my doctrine. You understand? Everything that you hear coming out of my mouth comes from Yahweh and can be proven and verified. I ain't worried about nobody coming behind me uh, trying to disprove anything to come out of my mouth. Yahweh has already revealed this. 
and I'm thankful for it, and I'm happy that I'm one of the vessels that he chose through which to speak these things through, because I'm looking at it and learning from it just like you. That's how my conscience is elevated. And one of the brothers asked me a question the other day. Uh, we was on the phone. And we went into that about the uh, Yahweh writing the law in your heart and mind. And he, I think he asked this question. He said, how did, uh, when did Yahweh write it in the heart and mind? And how did he do that? See, when the gospel was preached unto you, and you began to receive revelation of what you was hearing, those revelations were being written in your mind and in your heart. That became an indelible part of you. That's how he was writing in the heart and the mind, was through the revelation given by the gospel that was being preached. Everything that comes out of my mouth has been written in my heart and in my mind. I'm not speaking from memory. I'm speaking from the heart. This is what Yahweh has put in me to say. And all glory, all honor goes to my Father. Through Yahshua the Messiah, the Savior, which is Yahweh Elohim himself manifested in the flesh. I'm not ignorant of the pattern. I'm not ignorant of the Godhead. I know that Yahweh is Elohim. I know that Yahweh Elohim is Yahshua the Messiah. I know why it's like that. Because Yahweh is saved before the world ever was. And in order for you to see him and to see the Savior that he was, and is back in pure spirit, he had to manifest in a physical form. Because that's where we were. That's the same one that was in pure spirit manifested in the flesh. Same spirit. It's not three of them. Oh, boy. All right. Let's go to Colossians. I think I called. Then I called the 17, 20, and Luke. Let's get that. Luke 17, 20, King James Version. And when he and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, "The kingdom of God cometh not with observation." Come, come by observation. You're not gonna be able to see it with your physical eyes. Jesus is gonna jump down out the sky. He's coming with his mighty angel. Hell, you ain't gonna see it. Not with your eyes. And he ain't coming down from the sky. He is coming down from heaven, but it's not up there in the sky. That's not the heaven he's talking about. I try my best to show you what heaven is and where it's at. It's in you. It's Yahweh in you. That's heaven. See, now you have to be transformed or translated into him, which is heaven. And that translation is done psychologically and spiritually. Say it all the time. We have to make this trick psychologically and spiritually. Just words rolling off your tongue. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. You really have to take this trip psychologically and spiritually. See? All right, read it. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. That's where it's at. The kingdom is in you. See, you ain't got to go flying off nowhere to get in it. Just believe the report and be translated. It's that simple. Stop fighting it because you don't see the thing don't manifest itself the way you're looking at it in your mind. You can't see it or figure it out no way. That's right. Lay aside your thoughts about it so you can see what it's about. Believe what he told you. That was Yahweh told us that we were him. That wasn't me. That was no man saying that. And I'm telling you, as he expressed it in that transcript, uh, you are Yahweh. I'm Yahweh. You are too. Acts 17, 20, 28. That transcript, he expressed that. Not his offspring. He said, now you see how we are Yahweh? We are his offspring. We are heirs of him. And if, look, 
and heir different nothing from a servant, though he owns all of it. All of it. Yahweh, all that he is is yours. But you different nothing from a servant at this point. But it's under tutors and governors until the appointed time where Yahweh will elevate you into that state of consciousness. Because that's what it's about. It's a state of consciousness, a state of being, a spiritual state of consciousness. Read on. Well, let's go there. Uh, okay, let's do this. Matthew 12 and 25. And get Romans fourteen seventeen first. Now the kingdom of Yahweh is in you. That's his spirit, folks. That's him in you. Mm -hmm. He is his kingdom. Romans fourteen seventeen. But the kingdom of Yahweh is not meat and drink. It's not eating and drinking or meats and drinks. You ain't going to be sitting up in there eating no food. Not but physical righteous. food anyway. Mm -hmm. You understand? But it's what? But righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, what is the Holy Spirit? You see how you got to ask these questions? Mm -hmm. You run around here thinking you know what the Holy Spirit is. Just because you right. said that word. Holy. Mm-hmm. That's right. The Holy Spirit is the knowledge of Yahweh. It's the wisdom of Yahweh. It's the understanding of Yahweh. That's what the Holy Spirit is. Right. That knowledge is holy. That wisdom is holy. That understanding is holy. And when you receive it, you have received the Holy Spirit. Get him off the cross. Stop looking at that image. Yahshua is the Holy Spirit. He wisdom, he's knowledge, he's understanding of Yahweh, he's the love of Yahweh, the justice of Yahweh. See? He's the wonderful counselor. <laughs> yes, he is. He's all those things to us. Yahweh has made it that way, see, to bring us up out of this state of mind, this state of consciousness that we were subjected to. You got your pattern to go by, folks. All you got to do is follow that pattern. We got to make that same trick that Israel mm -hmm. took and spiritually. That's real. That's what he told us. Mm -hmm. That's real. Yahweh hadn't lied to us. You just hadn't believed him. Mm -hmm. And because you hadn't believed me, you start leaning to your own understanding about it. That's right. That's where you got confused. That's right. Go ahead, Lord, Matthew. Matthew 12, 25. 12, 25. Yeah. And, Yahshua, and Yahshua knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Brought to naught. A ruins. Read. Mm -hmm. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. It ain't going to stand either. Just like this country ain't going to stand. It's just as divided as it can be. Mm -hmm. And they're more and getting more and more divisive. See, those Republicans, you understand, just like those Sadducees back there. See, they ain't believe in nothing that pertain to Yahweh. You understand? They were doing exactly what these Republicans are doing now. Restricting voter rights. You understand what the, the black folks can't vote. You see, uh, it's just amazing to me. They have no policy or program to offer the country. You see, so that people would consider it and possibly vote for them. They had something that the people like. But rather than that, they got to cheat and obstruct and prevent things from happening. See. And they offer into this cultural warfare that they keep mm -hmm. abating. You understand that? You just keep on with it. The streets going to be full of blood. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a revolution if they don't cut this crap out. 
fitting. You understand, folks against one another. You got mm-hmm. folks running around beating up Chinese folks because of this virus and because of Trump rhetoric. It's a China virus. Had them folks going into Walmart shooting up Mexicans. You understand? Mm-hmm. Now, if y'all would really turn this thing loose, or uh, turn Satan loose and let him do what he wants to do, there will be murder in the streets. It'll be just like the purge. Folks go around just killing everybody, one another, you understand? Just because they can. That would be one terrible day. I don't want to be one way around when that happened, <laughs> if that happened. I don't want to be nowhere around it. Uh, but finish that. Matthew twelve twenty six, And if the adversary cast out the adversary, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? How shall the kingdom stand if he's divided against himself? These United States can't stand, folks, as long as the country is divided like this. See? You got the black folks and the white folks. You understand the police against the black folks, you see? All this kind of thing going on here. And it's amazing to me to see these folks, the cops jump out and start shooting, you understand, when they got the stun gun. All they got to do is they pop them with the stun gun and knock them down. They ain't got to kill them, you see? But it's just it's hateful. You got more clans within the police uh, department, and you got them in the military, too. That's why you got ex-military folks training uh, with the, with the uh, uh, Proud Boys and the clans and all of that. And they got access to all kind of automatic weapons and explosives that the minority don't have access to. <laughs> See, so... It's just in the hands of Yahweh, folks. I'm telling you, this world is supposed to get turned upside down. Uh, and we need to be in the Messiah and know who and what you are and not be afraid to die. Don't be afraid to die. Don't let that fear, uh, 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 sudden fear, you understand, know cause you to panic and do some crazy stuff, you understand? But trust Yahweh in what he has told you. You have eternal life in the Messiah. If you truly believe and trust in that, then you got it made. Just believe it with all your heart and soul, and you got it made. Yahweh can't lie. Finish that. Uh, 27th verse, and if I by Beelzebub cast out demons, by whom do your followers cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the spirit of Yahweh, then the kingdom of Yahweh is come unto you. You see that? Now watch this. Hold that right there, Shirley, because I'm going to reread it. Uh, Acts 26, 16. Acts 26, 16. But rise and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. Now, this is Messiah who uh, knocked Paul down to the ground and gave him a vision. See? And as Paul said, nobody saw that vision but him. The folk that was with him didn't see it. Joshua appeared unto him. Read. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. Now he's going to show those things that he has seen and then the things that he's going to show him later on. See? I said he had made him a minister. Paul had a, look, Paul said at the feet of Gamaliel, he was a well-educated man in the law and the prophecy. You understand? Could speak several different languages. You see, but now here's the Messiah is telling him, read it again. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen 
and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. Now, Paul was already walking around preaching the gospel, what he thought was the gospel. See? And putting those in prison that was preaching in the name of Yahshua the Messiah because he didn't go along with it. He didn't believe it. He thought you still had to be, keep the law. But now Yahshua showed him in a vision that that wasn't the case. He fulfilled that. And Paul had to go back to the same people and preach to them. And, and as he was consenting to Stephen's death when they stoned him to death, they threw Paul outside the city and stoned him that they thought was to death, but he didn't die. But they left him for dead. So he had to suffer through the same thing that he was persecuting those Jews for. You see? Now read on to get the mission that Joshua had gave him. Read. Delivering thee from the people and from the nations unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the to open their eyes. See, the eyes were shut. Gave a lecture not too long ago. You understand about waking out of sleep. Y'all would cause a deep sleep to fall upon us. Our rulers and seers, he closed their eyes too. Every man's eyes were closed. Which means we were in darkness or ignorance. Now he's sending Paul out to preach to them to open their eyes and to deliver them from darkness to the light. In other words, changing their mind. From a carnal mind to a spiritual mind. Read on. And from the power of Satan unto Yahweh. That they from the may power of Satan. See, Satan's power is ignorance. If you're ignorant, he can tell you anything. You understand? If you don't know that you don't know, you just don't know. To the power of Satan. And people don't understand what Satan is. They got Satan way off somewhere too. Hmm. That's why he can deceive you so easily. Because he entered into your mind through your thoughts. That's how he entered into the garden. <laughs> yeah, wait, okay. Uh, wait. All right. Uh, so, finish that. Go back and read that again, uh, Shirley and, and Matthew, and come down. See. Okay, Matthew twelve twenty five, and Joshua knew their um, thoughts. Twenty six, twenty seven, bread somewhere in there. Oh, twenty seven. And if I by Beelzebub cast out demons, by whom do your followers cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the spirit of Yahweh, then the Put it kingdom... right there. Put it right there. If I cast out spirits, a demons by the spirit of Yahweh, see, by the wisdom, the knowledge, and the power of Yahweh, see, cast them out of you. All right. I know some of you didn't think you had one, but Dr. <laughs> Kennedy, uh, Yahweh said to Dr. Kennedy, every man has a demon in him. <laughs> he even said he had one. Some of them got more than one in them. You have to recognize what a demon is, folks. Hmm. It ain't no red man with a tail, you understand? Some angel flopping around with wings. It's spirit. It's wisdom. It's knowledge, yeah. too. Right. It knows how to deceive. It That's knows what you're supposed to be about. That's how he can deceive you. Yahweh gave him that power. He know what you're supposed to be doing, what you're supposed to be about, and he's doing everything to block you, <laughs> keep you from getting there. That's, right. That's his job. That's what he's supposed to do. He's doing a good job, too. That's Yahweh right. said he's going to reward him for the good job that he's doing. <laughs> yes, indeed. I love Yahweh, my old him. It's time that you can't understand him. How in the world... <laughs> How in the world are you going to know anything about him? Right. If you can't comprehend him. Listen, are you not comprehending what we're talking about here? That's right. 
Because what we're talking about is Yahweh. Good question. Mm-hmm. Are you not mm-hmm. in this? Mm-hmm. All right, let's go to the Col- finish that, baby. Uh, but if I cast out demons by the spirit of Yahweh, then the kingdom of Yahweh is come unto you. And the kingdom is come unto you. Now, where was the kingdom at? Sitting off in you. Now, watch this. Mm-hmm. Well, I can pay attention. You didn't know that the kingdom was in you, did you? Mm-mm. You was ignorant of it. Get first of reason six, nine, uh, 316 right quick. And help me get back to where I'm at. First Corinthians 316. Know ye not that ye are the temple of Yahweh and that the spirit of Yahweh dwelleth in you? That's the kingdom. Is that spirit of Yahweh that's dwelling in you. But now watch. You were ignorant of it. You were in the dark about it. Now Paul was sent to bring Israel from darkness to the light or to the understanding. Or uh, transform them into the kingdom. That's in you. You ain't got to fly all out the body, go fly out through the sky, run it through the atmosphere, the troposphere, the all the spirit and go up through all of that and all that blackness and darkness and try to get to Yahweh. He's right there in you. The kingdom is in you. You're transformed into it right within yourself by believing and accepting the truth. That's how I'm talking about the whole truth and nothing but. Now I'm going to try to close out. Uh, Colossians. 1 and 12. Colossians 1 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the sons in light. Hold it right there, Brother He has made us meet. That word means he's acceptable. Suitable. Be suitable. He had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the sons in knowledge, in understanding. That's what light is. In knowledge, in understanding, and in the wisdom of Yahweh. Read on. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and now from ha- the power, he has the power of darkness. He has the power of ignorance. Darkness is ignorance. He has delivered us from the power of ignorance and has <laughs> traveled into the kingdom of his dear son, which is peace, joy, and happiness in the knowledge of the truth. The truth is the kingdom. The truth is the Holy Spirit. Do you understand? That's what the truth is. It's the Holy Spirit. And you can break that word truth down and find out what the truth is. It's what we're telling you now. See? Read on. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. 21st verse. And you that were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present. I see that. And you that were once alienated are cut off from Yahweh, listen, which has always been in you. You were just unconscious of it. You was in it as well. In your mind. Your mind. By wicked. By work. wicked. That's where you was in it at, in your mind. You was contrary to him. That's why you had to die out of their mind. You had to stop and recognize that you are not that person you're looking at in the mirror. That's what has to die. And has, and he has reconciled us. 
in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy, unblameable, unreprovable in his sight. Yeah. Read on. If you continue in his faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under the heavens, mm. where all I saw and made a minister, you see. Now let's get on over here to the second chapter, pick it up at the fifth verse. Okay. For though then I, I want to go to First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. And I close with that. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joy and beholding your order. And the steadfast. Now you have to really you have to really be there to see that one. Because I was thinking about this tonight. And the thought comes to my mind that I should say it, but then I thought about it. I said, no, nah, that ain't right, because that, that's not even the truth. <laughs> Uh, but the thought comes to my mind to say, well, I miss all y'all uh, in in physical form, you see. I miss you seeing y'all in the physical form and physical bodies and stuff like that. Uh, but y'all would say, no, nah, don't even go there. That's not how that is. Don't even bring that down. Mm -hmm. See? And, That's and, right. and what, it, what, what, what you're reading right here now. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit. That is true. And by that, join and behold in your order. I can see y'all. Whether you're at work or wherever you're at, I see you. <laughs> I know that's hard to understand. And the steadfastness of your faith in the Messiah. Now, read this. Is, this is the part I want to get into. Right here. As, read this. As ye have therefore received Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior, so walk ye in him. Rudy, Hold up right there. Hold up. Now he got to be somewhere where you can get in him. If you're going to walk in him, you got to put him on. He can't be way out there in the stars somewhere mm -hmm. coming back. You got to put him on now and walk in him. Now, what does that mean? Walk in the knowledge. Walk in the wisdom. Walk in the understanding. That's the Messiah. You put that knowledge on. You put that understanding on and you see and you understand what's going on, why it's happening. See? You understand that it's Yahweh carrying out his purpose. You're not worried about death and dying and what could happen to you. That's right. Look at all those that who died believing and having faith in Yahweh. Where are they now? Where are they now? I know I'm probably going over time, haven't I? Yes, let me. Oh man! All right, get uh, Hebrews eighteen. I want to show you where they are now, right now. Those that believe and trust in Yahweh, that died in faith. I want you to see where they are right now. Then I want to go to uh, 1 Thessalonians, 4th chapter. I'll pick up a couple of things there. Then we go to the 5th chapter and be through with it. I'm sorry we're going over time, folks, but I just couldn't find nowhere to cut this off. Uh without detracting from the message itself and what we were trying to get across. Hebrews eleven seventeen. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested. 18, 12, 18, 12, 18. Okay. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched and that oh, burned you have not come to the mouth that might not be touched. Is that what it said? For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched and that burn with fire, 
nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest. Go ahead. And the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. For they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched a mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But so Paul you, is using this analogy here to express and talk about New Jerusalem. Now that eight verse, 18 verse says, for you are not come unto the mouth that might not be touched. See, they couldn't touch that mountain back there. But Paul is telling you, now you have not come to that kind of mountain. You can touch this one. That's why it's necessary to have that in there like that and read it correctly. Read on. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living Elohim, the heavenly That's Jerusalem. What, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you have come to the Mount of the living Elohim. You have come to your inheritance. See? Your life has been stored up and your name has been written in the loin. That's the book. That's the place that's reserved for you in heaven. When you receive the Holy Spirit and the knowledge of the truth, you have come to that. Read. But ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living Elohim, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general... You with a whole lot of angels. You can't even count them. There's so many of them. When we're talking about those that kept their state. So we caught up with the angels, folks. Read. To the general assembly and congregation of the firstborn, which are written in we heaven. We caught up with the general assembly and the congregation of the firstborn. Those that raised after the Messiah's death. He was the first one of them that slept in the earth to get up. Then all the rest of them got up after his resurrection. So we're caught up with them too. And we're also caught up with the spirits. The spirits of just men made perfect. In other words, those spirits have all come into one body. And I'll try to get this example earlier. And it slipped my mind uh, how that was expressed and explained. That you wouldn't be coming to an arm or a leg or face or anything like that. Yahweh took me back and showed me this. He said, now you were made in, in his likeness and image, are you not? And I said, yes, sir. He said, now are you the arm or the leg or the feet or the hand or are you the whole thing? I'm the whole thing. I'm the arm, the feet, the legs. In other words, when you come into Elohim, we're talking about making up that body. We are the whole thing. We are Yahweh Elohim. The whole body. And I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to go to the fifth chapter right quick because I ain't got my run out of town. I don't want to hold up too much longer. Uh, uh, Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 4 and the last five verses. First Thessalonians 4 and 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Which have no hope, cried about somebody that's dead. And thinking folk can go to the grave and talk to the dead. You see what I'm talking about? See, folks do believe that. Read. For if we believe that Joshua died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Joshua will he bring with him. See, all those sons that fell by the wayside, or fell, 
you see, by one means or another, that had faith and trust in Yahweh, are asleep in the Messiah. The souls are asleep in the Messiah. He kept them all. As he said, I've lost none. From Adam all the way down, he kept them. Planting them, picking them up. Planting them and picking them up. Bringing them all the way down to the cross. See? Uh, read on. For this we say unto you by the word of Yahweh, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Savior shall not prevent them which are asleep. For Yahshua himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of Yahweh. And the dead in the Messiah shall rise first. I wish I had time to really do justice. I don't like speeding through these things, uh, but I don't run out of time. But uh, Acts of the Apostles, uh, where they were stoning Stephen's, just to show you the point that I'm trying to make, that the kingdom of Yahweh is in you, and that's Yahweh himself. When they were stoning Stephen's, it said that heaven opened up. This was in, see, no, Stephen had the Holy Spirit in him. That's the kingdom. It opened up, and That's he right. saw Yahweh, he said, and Yahshua sitting on his right hand. Now, he's looking into the kingdom by vision while they're stoning him. So I'm trying to show that when the Messiah shall descend from heaven, that's coming from within you. That's not coming from outside of you. He's coming into every man's conscience with his reward. Those that have done good unto eternal life, those that have done evil unto eternal damnation. That's how it's working, folks. I don't, I'm going to cut it off here, but you read that fifth chapter. I wish I could get on in there. But you read that fifth chapter, First Thessalonians. It's talking about we being the children of the light. You understand? We are not of the darkness, but we are children of the light. We are Yahweh's offspring. We are spirit of his spirit. We are the same as he is even right now. That's right. Not another Yahweh to come down to be us or anything else. But that one Yahweh, that's what you are. Don't let nobody know that devil tell you something different than that. That is what you are. That's what you got to come to realize. Because in the end, there will be nothing standing but Yahweh and Yahweh alone. You must right. be translated back into him. Psychologically, spiritually. Translated back into him. So I'm going to cut it off there. I hope you got to something out of it. I always enjoy speaking the words and the wisdom of Yahweh to any that will hear and receive it because that's what I was sent here for. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. You understand? And, and as was stated here tonight, we're not putting no credit or giving no man credit for this. You see, now I understand when you said Dr. Boston said this and Dr. Boston, I understand that, but I just want to make it understood that as it was done here earlier uh, tonight, that this is not coming from Dr. Boston. This is coming from Yahweh. I'm just a vessel through which these things are administered. So I trust and hope that you got some out of it. And I thank Yahweh for all of you. And I pray that he keep us from the evil one and protect us from this virus that he got going on here until the time of reformation, until we are reformed in his image, his spiritual image, you see. So I thank him, and y'all will continue to keep him blessed. All right, hallelujah. That will conclude class this evening. Any questions or comments from anybody on Zoom or um, YouTube? I have a comment, Mike. To add on to my testimony, one question, one of the main questions that we all need to ask ourselves, if you are not Yahweh, then who are you or what are you? That's a question that needs to be meditated on. And how do you prove that? And I'll give you a hint and then the Holy Spirit hopefully will take it from there. 
Yahweh formed Adam from the dust of the earth and breathed into him a breath of life and he became a living soul. But that's a question that can take you deep into some things if we stop and look at it. If you're not Yahweh, then who are you? Mm-hmm. All right. Any other comments or questions? I have a comment. Okay. Um, I might really enjoy it, uh, the, la- the little bit that I got out of class. I was a little late joining. I haven't been able to p- participate the last couple of weeks due to my schedule and everything. But um, it just reassures me that Yahweh is with us always, no matter if you're able to be on the call or, or whatever the case is that's going on, because he knows what's going on in everybody's life. But Yahweh's with us all and always. Salute. Hallelujah. Good. Any other comments or questions before we conclude? All right, so we'll conclude with the doxology. The doxology is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Let everyone say hallelujah. 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 And good night. Good night. Hallelujah. Good night.